On this episode of Strange Town, we travel to Yoakum, Texas. Claims of a mysterious blue nun, dark figures permeate these walls. It just, it bothers me to this day that I actually saw that because I physically saw that. And I'm like going, how did that happen? We investigate the old Yoakum Community Hospital. My name is Mark Morrow. And my name is Billy Driver. We are here to seek out claims from ordinary people who come in contact with the unknown. Real stories. Real evidence. Welcome to our world. And welcome to Strange Town. In 1922, the city of Yoakum built a community hospital from land and cash donated by the late John Huth. Unexpectedly, the hospital fell into decline during the midst of the Great Depression. It became a huge financial nightmare for the people of Yoakum. And today, the original hospital building sits abandoned. Yoakum, Texas is located just a few hours east of San Antonio and nestled in between the Lavaca and DeWitt County line. In 1824, this region of land was governed by the United Mexican States, known as the Coahuila y Tejas Republic. In 1835, the Mexican government granted a league of land to John May, which was used for gathering cattle. Following the Civil War, Beef was in big demand to the northern states. The state of Texas herded thousands of wild longhorn cattle up the Chisholm Trail to northern cattle markets. This area was beneficial to the old trail drives, and the longhorns were referred to as Texas Gold. But the town of Yoakum did not grow until the construction of the San Antonio and Aransas Pass Railway in 1887. Railroad shops were located in Yoakum in 1888, and hundreds of people from surrounding towns found employment at its large roundhouse. The town's infrastructure was laid out and named after Benjamin F. Yoakum, the railway's general manager. A store was built, a post office erected, and the town was incorporated in May 13 of 1889. By 1896, Yoakum had a cotton mill, three cotton gins, a compress, several churches, a bank, an ice factory, specialty and general stores, a school system with 700 pupils, and a population of 3,000. By 1914, the number of residents had reached 7,500. Nineteen twenty two saw the birth of Huth Memorial Hospital, a thirteen bed facility opening on Hubbard Street. The hospital was owned and operated by the city of Yoakum. During the Great Depression, the hospital was no longer able to support itself and became a detriment to the city. It was during this time that the Sisters of the Incarnate Word and Blessed Sacrament of Victoria would take over management of the facility. They started an auxiliary where 200 members paid $1 dues annually. The money was used to buy oxygen equipment, instruments, and various hospital supplies. The nuns would visit the hospital two or three times a week to help make sponges, cotton balls, and any other supplies the hospital needed. The hospital grew in stature and reputation. New funding saw an expansion the facility would soon change its name to the Yoakum Community Hospital. 
Everything seemed to be going fine, but in the 1980s, the hospital was struck with more financial hardship due to a major change in Medicare, which the hospital was heavily reliant upon for business. It was around this time that the Sisters of the Sacrament would step down and soon be replaced by Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word of San Antonio, who would eventually make major upgrades to the hospital. Even though the building had been modernized, no machine could save the life of a nurse who was gunned down by her jilted lover right here in this room. In the early 1990s, a young nurse was working in the intensive care unit. During her shift, she received an unexpected visit from her distraught husband. In a rage, he argued with her in the waiting room of the second floor, pulled out a gun, and shot her several times before running out of the hospital. Doctors and nurses rushed her to the ICU, but the gunshots were fatal. The man responsible was sentenced to 99 years, but hung himself in the Lavaca County Jail shortly after his trial. In 1997, the hospital moved to a new state-of-the-art facility only miles away, abandoning this location. And as the building sits unused for the past 20 years, memories of the former hospital still remain. But there are other memories that will haunt this location forever. We meet up with Robbie, managing partner from the old Yoakum Hospital Group. Hey, my name is Robbie Lowry. I'm a founding member of the old Yoakum Hospital Group for the Yoakum Hospital here in Yoakum, Texas. I came across it in about 2011. Uh, I was with a paranormal group in, in, in Victoria and we were looking for places to go. And we came in and, and that very first night that we were here, we, we caught some pretty interesting stuff. So it, it sparked our interest and so we just, just kept coming back. We've been coming back about once, twice a month ever since. Well, this is the only way in and out. He leads us to the chapel on the first floor. This is where Father Crom held his mass uh, with the nuns, you know, every day, and then especially on Sundays. This is this is where it happened. Uh, he was the world's only quadriplegic priest, and, um, and so this he came in, he li he lived here in the hospital. He didn't pass away here in the hospitals, so we don't really know if his spirit is still here. This community really loved Father Crom. He was very well respected in this community. He was an avid uh, ham radio operator. Everybody just loved him you know uh, they would have wheelchair races with him up and down the hallway the nurses just were tickled to death with him uh, he, he was just a, a great man you know and so that's why we we feel there's 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 nothing negative in this hospital that's the way we feel he begins to tell us about a shadow figure captured by a previous investigation team they, they were standing right here they were filming like this, and they go back and forth, and then they swing around, and then then they then they right about similar to where he's at, but the, he was he was facing that way. So you're, you know, so then they then they go back and they pan on it, and they go slow motion and let you see it, and then they go back and then they freeze on it. And you sit there and go, that's a person. There's a shadow even on the floor. This is the actual emergency room right here. Lots of EVPs in this room. Uh, screaming, uh, moaning, uh, and cold spots. Um, here in the emergency, the emergency department, I guess, we had come down here and was investigating this area. And uh, we had gone into this room, I believe it's a surgery room. We hadn't had really any experiences in there until we started, we came out and we started hearing children laughing and playing and uh, sounded like they were upstairs. So uh, one of the other investigators went to check it out. He went further down the hallway and I was kind of standing like right about here and was just kind of listening. And as I was standing here listening, I felt like, like a child would come up and try to get your attention. I felt three taps 
on my wrist and I kind of brushed it off for a second and then it happened again three little taps on my wrist and I'm like okay something's going on so I just kind of stood there and waited and it happened a third time three little taps on my wrist we don't really know why there's children ghosts here. Uh, we've had psychics in here and saying there's there's a boy and a girl running around here, and we and there's there, you know, uh, there's captured EVPs of a little girl going hi, but that's 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 rather odd. I don't know why a child spirit would be in this building. Robbie takes us to the second floor. Came up here to this doorway right here, and describes the nurse's final moments. His wife was working in this area right here, called her. They, they said something to each other. He called her, came over here. They, they were right here, and they started arguing over who knows what. And then he pulled a gun out and shot her. And when, when she collapsed, you know, everybody came out, and, and they brought her over here into ICU. Somewhere in this room she passed. I don't know which area exactly, but uh, in this room. But th that's the one actual murder in, in this hospital, as tragic as it is, you know. That doorway right there, we've had two groups uh, claim they saw a full body apparition of a nurse in scrubs, blonde hair, ponytail and everything. Uh, we've never captured that. We, we've never seen it as much time as we've been in this hospital. We've never seen it. But two, two people claim to have seen it in, standing right there in that doorway where that chair is. But there, that we do have pictures of, of, I don't even know what to call it, plasma, you know, right about right, about right here. You know, it's, it's, it's strange. It's a purple. You know, it's just odd. We were here with uh, the Kling brothers one time. They were filming for a Japanese TV show and they were standing right down here. And what's odd is I got another video of a shadow person that crosses right here. We meet up with Coy McCollum who captured video evidence of a spirit in the second floor stairwell. So I'm coming down and I'm by myself and I have my camera, uh, it's a night vision camera. So I'm coming around and I'm panning, I'm looking around and I get about right here and I just pan into the stairwell right here, the exit door. And I look and right here on the corner of the stairs, you can see something. It looked like legs, it looked like a small figure and you can see it in the actual video. It startled me. And, and so I grab my camera and I start going in and I get about right there and as soon as I put it up and I stop, you can hear footsteps just run up the stairs. That looked like somebody just went up the stairs. Hello? Nobody's there, nothing. Up here on the third floor. Now right here is where I had my most, uh, I don't know how to say, I still can't believe what I saw here. I was, I was here one day giving a tour to a, a group uh, that was gonna come and investigate the place. And we were all standing down there in the hallway and I turned around and I looked right here in this hallway and I saw two legs just walk across. No torso, no feet, just two legs. This is the area of the blue nun. The only way I captured it was with my eyes. I have, I have no proof and it just, it bothers me to this day that I actually saw that because I physically saw that. And I'm like going, how did that happen? Investigator Coy once caught some pretty good evidence. He caught what appeared to be an apparition of a man or a young boy running up the stairs behind me. Will this DVR camera catch the same apparition? In 
finally, this DVR is on the third floor. This is where Robbie has seen a blue nun. Will this DVR camera capture the blue nun? We begin our night of investigation in the chapel. You'll notice that um, we're wearing masks. Uh, the air quality in this building is very, very poor. And just spending the day that we've been in here setting up, we're kind of, our throats and our lungs are starting to feel it. So throughout the investigation, uh, we're going to be wearing these air filtration masks. And uh, up on three, where there's a serious mold problem, we're going to move to heavy duty respirators. Uh, so in my hand, I've got a Mel meter. This basically detects electromagnetic energy in the air, which ghosts are thought to produce. Uh, one thing we like to do is do a sweep of the room and see if there's already any energy in the air. Uh, most rooms should read zero. There shouldn't be anything. So if this device registers a spike, it'll be a good indicator that something has appeared there with us that wasn't originally there. Whoa, I got a, got a spike real quick. Right here. It went away. And I got tingles right when it happened. Point one, not a lot, but something. Something in a building with no electricity. And this being a hospital and everybody knew everyone and everybody was friendly. You know, think of us like the people you once knew. Don't think of us any differently. I swear I just saw two eyes over there. Over there? You saw two eyes? Like two glowing, like white eyes. A human height? Yeah. Like where, you see where that marker is on that wall? Uh huh. It's like that height. We thought where Billy saw the eyes was a closet. But when he decided to place a rim pod inside, we soon discovered it was the priest's changing room. A REM pod emits its own magnetic field, and once it's disrupted, an alarm will sound and lights will go off. If you're in the, if you're in your changing room right now, can you light up one of those lights on the sink? They just let us know you're here. We notice a peculiar black object peek through on the bottom left of the frame. On the sink, they just let us know you're here. As the camera continues to record. We also notice these two faint lines strangely moving just around the corner. If you're in the, if you're in Our the mysterious room, black object is simply a cockroach making his presence known. With no activity from the rim pod, we decided to move on. What we have going on in the former x-ray room is we've set up a laser grid. It's a laser that shows hundreds of dots throughout the room. And we've set up a DSLR to take a picture every two seconds. And what we're looking for is to see if there's any differences in the dots. If there's a shadow figure or a mist, it'll obstruct the dots. Also, I, uh, we placed the flashlight on the edge of this table. We're just gonna invite, if there are any spirits down here, to just go ahead and turn that flashlight on. And hopefully these dots can get some sort of an outline of their um, physique. We make our way to the second floor, where the nurse was tragically murdered. While placing our camera into position, we notice an orb appear on the top of the screen. Orbs are translucent balls of light, which many believe are one of the forms that spirits can take. Okay, so we're currently on the second floor of the Yoakum Hospital, and this is the room where the nurse got gunned down by her former lover. Is this the nurse's orb forming behind us? And there's been this whole rumor with her blood stain still being on the carpet, but it's been tested and it's been debunked. So for all you people who think the blood is permanently stained on this carpet, it's not. So I got this Obelisk 3. Uh, spirits can manipulate this device by picking the words that are already pre-programmed in here and communicate with us. We're going to see what happens here. Can you pick the word nurse? Although our ovulus was silent, 
we did capture a voice on our camera's microphone. It appears to be a man's voice, followed by a flashing orb in front of Billy. Is this the man who killed his wife, speaking to us from beyond the grave? We set up for another EVP session on the third floor, where the blue nun has been seen. Can you please come up to this red light and say hello? Did you used to work here? Going off of information provided by a previous investigator, we target a particular priest. Is your name Father Arthur? Whoever we were speaking to seemed interested to know more about us. That was kind of creepy. There's something behind you. Seems like something was wrestling it. Oh, that? Behind you? And you were touching it? Sounded like. So, you know what it felt like? Like something passed me and just kind of like made the sound. Jeez. Is there somebody up here? Do you not like us up here? As we review our DVR camera located behind us down the hallway, we notice an orb pass behind Billy at the exact moment that he is startled. Judging from the height of this orb, could this be one of the child spirits running behind Billy? We're going to turn the spirit box and see if we can get any uh, results from it. What this device does, it scans the radio airwaves at such a rapid pace to uh, emits a white noise in between the stations. Uh, suppose those spirits can take that white noise and communicate in real time so we can hear it. Are you a nun? Are you evil? Oh my god. Oh shit. Are you evil? Oh my god. Yeah. Oh. It was either Hay or Billy. Did you just say my name? Oh. Like, does it feel staticky up here? Huh? Like, does it feel different up here? Yeah, it does. Like, more staticky? That's why I kind of wanted to leave. I didn't like it. I'm kind of like... Having some anxiety right now. Dude, I totally, f I know what you mean. I could feel. Yeah, look. Yeah, look at both at the same time. Something's going Something's on. Something's passing through this hall, these hallways. That's weird how we both get the things at the same time. Yeah, that was kind of going away. What was that, dude? Did That's... you hear that? No. Sounded like it. Well, hopefully it was stuck. It went. Tick, tick. But the thing goes the same thing. You know, it's kind of going away. Was that, dude? Did you Oops. hear that? That was a that was a intense static feeling, dude. It was. Like it literally felt like it was just passing, like through us, like just going, it was like very moving. Busy. Very busy, very intense. Kind of like it had us, not, I don't want to say cornered, but it kind of like had us... Surrounded? Surrounded at one point. Yeah, it felt that way. Once we went to that corridor? Yeah. Kind of uh, like when we were standing there, it was just all around us. Uh, I don't know uh, what to think about that. 
We left the camera recording down the third floor hallway where we had felt a static charge. A ball of light morphs into an elongated string-like anomaly as it floats to the area where we were just standing. Could this be the orb of the rarely seen blue nun? At the end of the night, we revisit our laser grid and notice a significant change in a group of dots. If you look at image 2, you will see five dots disappear. As we superimpose what the image is overlooking, you can see that the dots vanish over the countertop. This anomaly is also occurring exactly where earlier in the night, Billy had left a flashlight to be manipulated. Whatever it may be, this hospital seems to be active on every floor, each floor holding its own set of stories and experiences. But what we noticed is that the spirits here seem interested in the living just as much as we are with the dead. Until next time, happy haunting.